Kings here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, bringing you a film breakdown of Florida's offense versus Georgia's defense. A lot to look at here. I'm going to deep dive on Richardson's play. Were those turnovers all his fault? Were they horrible decisions? Were they bad reads? Could he have done anything differently? I'm also going to look at what Florida could have done differently against Georgia's defense and missed opportunities. And of course, I'm going to highlight Georgia's defense, the number one defense in the country this season the number one defense in the country for many seasons and trending as one of the best defenses in the modern era. Yes, they have not played a real offense yet, including Florida's. There are not a lot of real offenses this season in college football. So still a lot of opportunity for Georgia to rack up those gaudy stats, which they did against Florida on Saturday. As always, if you like this content, subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, consider dropping us a dono on Patreon, where you can support our efforts to bring you this type of content each week and check out the podcast each Monday where we bring you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. First play we'll look at here is third and three for Florida. Georgia, as we talked about entering into this game, as I did on the film review on the channel, likes to stay in their too high shell. This gives them a lot of flexibility when running back end coverages. They can run virtually any coverage from here, cover one, two, three, or four, and they can also mix up what they do underneath. We said uh, Georgia, or I said rather, Georgia tends to run roughly 20% man defense, and they did that against Florida. In fact, they chose to play man uh, on third down quite a bit throughout the game, but they mixed it up. Florida at this point in time has motioned several times already. In fact, all the receivers you see here started over here. You're just catching the very end of this motion. This matchup here is a preview of the the pick six that Richardson threw later in the game. It's Malik Davis on N'Kobe Dean. N'Kobe Dean is going to do a good job defending it here, which should have led Florida to believe they were going to do a good job at that point as well. We'll talk about Richardson's performance throughout this film breakdown. Here we have a slant with Copeland. Georgia was wise to routinely, as you're going to see on this film breakdown, really double what they thought was going to be Florida's first read with a middle defender or a rat in this case, a rat or a robber, depending on the terminology you prefer. And they're locked up here in cover one man pre-snap. Now, Florida would know this. Obviously, Richardson's still a redshirt freshman. Florida keeping things simple. At this point in time, and this is what we're going to do in every single film review on this channel. I always do this. You want to look for the optimal pass. Now, here he knows he's three by three. This could be a linebacker who either is going to pressure or is going to stay in this lane, which until you pre-snap, this slant may or may not be good. And then here you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup where you know you have a hitch. And judging by the depth here with a linebacker, you may or may not enjoy or love that route. I would say here is where you want to look, especially if you know what these route combinations are. It's going to make it that much better, which he would have known to roll the tape here. You're essentially going to get two clear outs and an out route here at the sticks for the first down against man defense, which creates a natural rub. None of this is going to matter because we're not looking there. You can see right away his head snaps to the slant on third and three. They're trying to hit Copeland on the slant. That is not there. Waiting defender, watching his eyes, sliding into the window. And then here you have Dean doing a nice job on Malik Davis, taking away the hitch. And then Richardson simply is going to not like that throw and then evade. He's going to make a move. But if you look over here, that is, of course, where you want to go. You have this throw. Ideally, Richardson reads his slant route and then comes off to his next best route, which would have been here. That's definitely going to be his next best route. He has time for this. He's not going to do it. Instead, he thinks he sees daylight here. He does not see, he does not see the other defensive tackle stunting across the formation, and that is going to basically bait him into this run to where he's not going to make it. So you can see a lot of things going on there with George's defense. There was an available, there was an available route. There was only one despite the fact that Florida was five wide, not here, not here, not here, not here, just here. But for Richardson, this is really a two-read a two read play. That's what it is. He should have had time to check here and then check there. Doesn't do it, and Florida gets stopped on third down. Here's a play that Florida's had a lot of success on during the Dan Mullen era. We're going to motion Kamori Gamble over the formation, and he is going to basically look like he is blocking number four here, Nolan Smith. And then he's going to release up the field as Richardson rolls to the right just to create some eye candy here as if this play is going to go to the right. Here's what you see on your screen. And here is the fateful moment. Look like we're blocking. Now we're not going to block. We're going to release 
of the field. The routes that you can't see going off your screen here are just clear out routes. They're going both very, very vertical. They're gonna occupy those two high safeties and make sure there's plenty of space here for this one-on-one -on -one matchup with Gamble versus Nolan Smith, a linebacker. Richardson sets up perfectly and then reads high to low. You can see him read here high all the way down to low. If in the event they obviously had left this post route open off the start, you would definitely take that for a touchdown. He reads that out first, comes all the way across. Does the appropriate thing, has time, nice job blocking here, nice work by Pierce. Has plenty of time, does not make his best throw. He's gonna want this back. There's about 15 yards of space up the sideline here to be had. Unfortunately, he's gonna put Gamble in a really tough spot here. This ball's way overthrown uh, to the high side. Ball placement, not good. Gamble makes a great catch for a first down, but again, Richardson, you'd rather see this ball here where Gamble's running into it, and that has a chance to make a move on the defender coming downhill. That play could have been much, much bigger, but a nice design and a first down. One of the keys to George's defense is being able to stay in a too high shell. It's a safety right there. You can see his helmet, another one here, and still be able to stop the run undermanned. Six Georgia defenders here versus eight Florida players here. Of course, you have two running backs, but they both can be employed to block giving you the eight-man advantage if Richardson keeps it. Georgia was successful all day long playing undermanned in the box. Florida is hoping to have more success running here. They're going to wind up being plus two technically in the box here, plus two technically in the box, one conflict defender who's playing run or pass to make it even, but Florida is expecting to be able to at least get to this conflict defender in this situation, and they are going to be unable to, to do so, a very minimal gain by Naquan right on this play again, despite the fact that Florida has a numerical advantage. If Georgia's defense is able to do this on anyone in the country, it's going to be a long day for that particular team, especially for a Florida team that has not really grown into a competent passing game yet. Yes, there are some ceiling potential pieces that can work, but have not proven that to be consistent, especially against good competition. And Georgia was able to win the battle, again, largely undermanned up front numbers-wise. And if that happens, they're able to play very sound on the back end. They're able to run a variety of underneath coverages. They're able to mix in man, basically making it really hard for any quarterback to get a good pre-snap feel for what defense Georgia is going to be in. And that requires a lot of post-snap reading and then protection from the offensive line, which again, no team that's played against Georgia thus far this season has been able to do. Florida was not able to do it either. Third and three for Florida. We've talked a lot in the week leading up to this game about Georgia's simulated pressure. They're not gonna give any simulated pressure here. They're actually just gonna bring pressure right here. Richardson does not, does not, call the proper protection here. You're gonna know this because you look right here, there's the head, there is the head of DeLance. Now DeLance obviously much maligned by this very channel for struggling to block, especially against speed rushers, but this is not his fault and we know this because he IDs him, he sees him, but he does not block him. He does not block him. Now there's two, there's two reasons for this. One, he's completely forgotten that Florida has motioned the running back out into the backfield. That's possible. I think that's pretty unlikely at this stage. We've seen DeLance mess up a lot. Pretty unlikely he forgets that. It's far more likely in this situation that Richardson has not called the proper line protection. In this case, what he needs to do is have the line prepare to slide right, essentially, and then change their assignments. Change their assignments. This way, what you're going to have happen is you're going to have DeLance block the edge rusher here, and everyone is going to slide over. Instead, Instead, Florida essentially is doing the opposite, and that's going to allow a free rush to get here to Richardson. Shorter's going to run a hitch route that would have been open. That's what Richardson wants. That's going to be open as Gamble flares out here, and you'll see George's defense pick this up in zone. He's going to be underneath defender, over top of the defender. They think this is the most likely throw, so they are attempting to take that away. You're going to have a hitch route that would have been open, which is what Richardson is looking at right from the start. That's what he wants. He wants shorter on the hitch. You can see him going to it. Unfortunately, we have an unblocked blitzer. Richardson tries to buy as much time as he can. A lot of happy feet here because he knows this is just not going to give him enough time. They're shorter in your screen. And he wisely chooses to throw this away. Again, this is third and three. This is an important play. This all could have been different if he simply calls the proper protection here up front. Now, I'm not going to hammer any redshirt freshman quarterback for these kind of finer details of the game. 
Uh, the reality is they're going to make these mistakes. You don't want to compound them, which he doesn't do here. But this could have been an easy first down throwing to his primary read if he gets his protection right. The second thing he could have done is recognize what kind of route he has here. So if you're not going to call the protection, then you have to know, do you have a route in the area where the blitzer comes from? So are we running any kind of in-breaking concept to where if this defender voids his area, we can make a pass? And the answer to that question is also yes. So let's assume that we don't want to slide the protection because we're comfortable allowing a free blitzer to come in because we know we're going to hit this underneath route, which could only be picked up by a safety who right now is just too far away to stop that. That play is also available and you'll see it right here on your screen right there it's available so same thing here you can either hit your smoke route or your hot route immediately blitzer voids the area take that spot or slide your protection and then take your hitch route either one would have been viable the preferred one in general really here is simply to take this route that's the easy money route especially with georgia playing off on their two man but either one could have worked florida does neither here that is the fault of richardson Again, these things are going to happen. My job on film is obviously to show you what's going wrong, what's going right, and then talk a little bit about the ceiling of Richardson. Uh, is what we're going to see on film today, is that going to lower my opinion of him as far as his ceiling goes? Or is this something where a young quarterback is going to make these mistakes? He still has all the tools to reach that same ceiling. The question is whether or not he will get there. And of course, I will answer that question definitively in a bit. But on this particular play, you can see both scenarios that were available to him both went wrong. And on third down, that's crucial. High leverage play, another miss for Florida. Second and five now from Florida. A lot of pre-snap motion for the Gators, which makes sense. We said on film that Georgia had had issues. Of course, not with a very basic motion like that, but they have had issues getting aligned correctly against certain pre-snap formations and um, situations in this particular play Florida gets what they want here we're going to roll out Richardson and then he's going to throw a hitch route here on the outside where we're going to get a bailing corner in cover three now Georgia runs excellent excellent bail technique with their corners they're both going to make sure they open up towards the inside funneling why that way towards the safety make sure you keep everything in this part of the field they also bail and keep their eyes on the quarterback allowing themselves to explode downhill if the route goes in that direction, you're going to see that here. Pay attention to the top of the screen and watch Ringo here as he's going to come down. Richardson does this perfectly. Rotates, sees it. Hitch action begins. Right foot in the ground. Ball is out. If he waits any longer, this can be a pick six. And that's why George's defense is so good is he is playing a bail cover three technique there. He's essentially giving you this pass. George is going to give you that pass on this play, but he almost gets there in time to separate shorter from the ball of course as the game goes on we're early here in the first quarter as the game goes on you will see georgia and their defenders get more aggressive with that step once they get a beat on you this might be even a faster break downhill as he gets a feel for what the team is doing in the first quarter he's going to play it safe there on second and five and the reason you can do that is even that feels again like a nervy pass Georgia taught very, very well in their zones and their zone technique to minimize the damage being done if passes are made and to allow the quarterback and the receiver to feel that pressure. Wow, that was a really high pressure hitch against a cover three bail. Shorter's probably feeling like I'm going to catch this and turn the corner. And in reality, he's tackled immediately. It lets you know, hey, these windows are small. Second and nine here. This is a really nice play design by Florida. Georgia, again, going to stay in their two-eye shell. You can see one helmet here. You cannot see the other one off your screen there. Giving Florida the advantage, like we saw earlier. Florida with eight. Georgia with six. This time, Florida is going to take advantage. And you've seen before on previous uh, film breakdowns, especially LSU, that in general, you want to follow the H-back or the wing-back, and that's where the ball goes. They tend to be a lead blocker. Florida instead is going to essentially fake that this play could be coming in the C gap here, but in reality, we're coming this way. And this is gonna work really nicely. We're gonna just hold, just hold the strong side linebacker just enough, which allows Florida right here to get Stuart Reese slipped through to then seal this block. Nice job by Braun, who I thought had a much better game filling in for Ethan White than what he had. The first time around, he then gets into the second level there puts his block on, and now the only player remaining is going to be the unblocked free safety who comes downhill and chooses the wrong gap. 
Again, good offensive line plays. You want to give your back a two-way gap, two opportunities to run through, which is what he gets here. Pierce nicely chooses the inside gap and then makes a big gain here. We should appreciate this. Laying the wood here to the remaining safety, make him feel you, make him feel the punishment. Drag a few guys. Pierce had a fantastic game carrying the football against this Georgia defense that just allows 2.2 yards per carry. Uh, Pierce almost near seven yards per carry in this game. So nice job by him. Nice play design there. If Florida were going to be competitive in this game, they needed to be able to consistently run against an underman box, which they were not able to do, but they did have moments like this one where they had some nice gains running the football. All right, second and seven for Florida. First quarter winding down. Again, one of the benefits of playing a two high shell at the start of everything is you can rotate down, you can drop back into cover four. Uh, essentially, you're, you're really strong against the pass and you're going to keep a top on everything. Florida is going to try to run a play action here, a good part of the field to do it right here on the opposing team's 40, the plus 40. Solid time to do it. George is going to play man-to-man, essentially, on the outside, playing man-to-man with safety help. Copeland's going to release to the outside, which is exactly what he needs to do. And then Richardson is going to throw this ball exactly where he should throw it. He only has two routes here. He's got two receivers running into four defenders. Not great numbers for Florida, but he does put this ball right where it needs to be. That is a perfect pass. You cannot put this ball to the inside because you have safety help to the inside. Copeland bends his route to the inside, which is extremely curious here. There is no chance he's supposed to do that in that situation. That ball has got to be going to the outside right where Richardson throws that ball. And that, in fact, is going to be, again, a perfectly thrown ball if Copeland runs that route correctly. One more look here. Outside release by Copeland, which is what you want. Again, you have a safety to the inside. He gets away clean. He has an advantage. This is a good situation for a quarterback. You want to drop this ball in the bucket. Then he turns inside into the safety again. You cannot throw a ball there. The ball cannot be thrown there. And there you see the football right here. This is potentially a completion if Copeland runs his route up the sideline. Obviously, you just cannot have these kind of mistakes when you're playing Georgia. Everything has to be in sync. But as for Richardson here, I like this ball. It's a good ball, right area, right read, right understanding of where the defense is and where that ball needs to be, and also good timing on the throw. Of course, it goes down as an incompletion, but this was a a fine incompletion from a quarterback standpoint. There were several times in this game where Richardson got his pre-snap read wrong, assuming that he has the ability to make a full field pre-snap read, which I have to believe that he does. It'd be unlikely that Florida is just locking onto a primary receiver in these sets, but I cannot say that for sure. I say this on every film review. There are many things I cannot say for sure, but if I were coaching Richardson on this play and for offense, and like I do on this film review on this channel all the time, you want to look at your numbers. And numbers wise right now, what you're going to see uh, for Richardson is you have three routes coming in this direction. You have a hitch here, you have an out route here, you have a little halfback middle route here. And essentially you have one, two, three, and four defenders, but this middle defender can go sort of either way. So for all intents and purposes, you have two on two and an inside safety. On this other side here, on the left side, in this particular play uh, to the boundary, you have one, two, and three with again a potential fourth here and you only have two eligibles. That's not a side you're gonna wanna work right off the start, but that is the side that Richardson is going to work here and your shorter is gonna run a curl route And you're going to see as this play develops what this looks like. Georgia is actually going to have their middle linebacker stay to this side of the field, essentially committing one, two, three, and four defenders to this side. Now they are going to bring a pressure here. Why they keep him here? Pressure here. Replace with here. Still, it's three on two. So we're three on two on this side. And up top, we're three on three with a single high safety who's rotated high middle. So had Richardson started working the right side first, he would have had better options. Instead, he's working this boundary side. Not as good. He is going to identify shorter on a hitch route, which is a possible first down pass, but it's more difficult than what he could have had up top. Either throw here is going to wind up being a first down. He has Henderson on an out route that's going to go off your screen. we got a halfback middle route that Pierce is going to win here as well, and you're going to see that one. He turns the hips of the linebacker. Here it is. That's an easy pitch and catch for a first down. He's committed to this hitch route. Shorter is going to slip, 
This is also probably going to be a first down. Shorter's a big body receiver. He's probably going to have this, but you obviously have a defender right on him. You have your free defender within two yards. Here's a better target. And again, up top is also a better target. So as Richardson plays more, I fully expect him to, to begin to pick up these little nuances, especially against good defenses. It just takes experience. It takes repetition and it takes consistency, getting to the line of scrimmage, making sure you're reading your numbers. Obviously, what is the most likely situation here post snap to occur? It's really important. You play the probabilities of that correctly. It's going to make you a much better quarterback to get those reads off faster. And again, that begins with pre-snap reading of the numbers. Take three on three in general rather than two on three. And if you happen to be wrong and the defense runs some sort of zany rotation, note that and hit them with a future play. But on this one, he makes it harder for himself in the 2v3 window. He still makes an on-time throw to the right spot. Unfortunately, shorter falls down. But good football is all about increasing your margin for error, not reducing it. And there again, kind of the wrong side of the numbers with the pre-snap read. And Florida on a crucial third and seven, while a chance to convert there on the plus side does not do it. This play is a perfect example of why Georgia's defense is so good and why it's so difficult to complete passes against them. It's first down and 10, a good passing down in theory. Florida's going to look like they're loading the box here with nine Georgia able to still play with an undermanned box here. You have three, six, and again, they're committing eight here, but they're still going to be down one. But look at the versatility of how they defend this with this simulated pressure. I send a linebacker here into the A gap. We're going to have a delayed blitz, uh, blitz, blitz. What is a blitz? Blitz into the opposing A gap there. So we're still going to wind up sending just, take a look, count them up. How many players do you see there for Georgia? Just four players are coming, but watch what they do. Here's the defensive end on zipper. He's going to be here. Here comes a linebacker flowing into that same zipper window. Here's your two high safety look. He is going to flow now into this hitch route window and rob that. So he's robbing anything that comes over the middle. You have a safety over the top for a vertical. You have a defender here essentially just playing man-to-man -man on the line against Zipper with a robber here coming over the top of that one. And then you're one-on-one -on -one with a running back on this side. Richardson right away opens up, takes a look at Zipper, recognizes what he has there is nothing, then moves his head across the formation and takes a look at his first hitch route coming to the interior, which is now going to get picked up by the robber. Doesn't throw that because that would have been a pick and instead still has to throw this pass over over a fronting linebacker. Look at this pass right here. Over a fronting linebacker, clearing him by maybe a yard right into this window. This is the bucket he had to put this in. He had to put this ball right through this shot here to the receiver on time accurately because otherwise these get picked up very quickly. Here is the route that would have been picked. And there's the player that came through. The other safety had come right through this window. Cannot get to that window in time. That is an extremely high level pass comes across from his first read to his second read to his third read he does that with clockwork precision and then has to feather in a beautiful throw over a dropping linebacker this is an example of a play that displays why i think richardson's ceiling absolutely has not dropped after this georgia game now the worst is yet to come with his performance but that's a spoiler alert when you see throws like that when you see technique like that on film when he has time there to make his reads that is extremely high-level stuff from redshirt freshman with a very accurate ball thrown with good velocity on time for a first down and a 15-yard gain. Now I'll show you from the other side just so you can appreciate what it's like to be a quarterback in this situation. So here's what you're looking at pre-snap. It's a very muddled picture. You see a heavy box. Then watch what happens post-snap. Here's your post-snap. Now you're reading, right? Eyes are here. I've got to read this. What am I getting on the post snap? I know they're in too high. I see he's down now in the intermediate area. What do I see? Okay, I get a late pressure here coming right into my window. Now I've got a player sliding here. This is not going to be great. Again, you can take this throw, but this is not great. This is not what you want, right? All right, now let's go to my next read. Snap my head around. Bingo. Let's ID this. This is, again, very quick. Take a look at the right foot. Next reads right here. Now this, to some players, would look pretty darn good, except what you cannot see is what's happening underneath here. And he knows where that route's running. Look at where that route's going. 
Look now where the Georgia player is. Again, the ball's still in his hand. He'd be throwing it right now. This looks like a lot of space until it's not a lot of space. This ball is almost certainly going to be picked. He recognizes this and instead comes here with a dime right to that window. So one more time, keep your eye on this drag. I want you to pay attention to this because this looks like this could be good. Right here is where that ball would have come out. Right now the ball's coming out. Looks like he's got a big gap here. It's about a 15-yard throw. If he had thrown that ball, you've got a flowing defender flowing right into that zone. He's going to put that ball right here, right? Probably going to be a pick. There's your picture. There's your window as they cross over each other. Now he's got to put this one over the dropping linebacker, which he does right there for a completion. Really, really nice pass, nice play, nice completion, good recognition not to pull the trigger on the second read. That second read was a dangerous one. It could have looked good. Nice idea of all of the dropping defenders post-snap. That's, again, very high-level stuff. First and 10 for Florida, and Florida's going to catch Georgia completely, essentially not ready for this snap. You can see the player coming on late at the end. They're going to wind up playing cover one man, cover one man across the board here. And despite the fact that DeLance recognizes recognizes that he has got Nolan Smith coming in late, there he is. He's got him coming in late. He is still going to get blown right by. And that's going to make this play much harder for Richardson. But watch Richardson's helmet. There goes DeLance doing what he typically does in these situations with a speed rush, despite having the advantage there. Richardson's going to feel him out. Right foot hits the ground. He feels him out. Again, he feels him, but he's not looking at him. He's not looking at him. He's looking here. He's looking at his receiver. I cannot state enough how important that is. One move climb. Recognize the pressure. Climb into the window where you can throw it. Get the ball out on time. Take a hit. Take a completion. Rather than that being a sack and a loss of five yards, he quickly IDs it and gains five yards. Again, that is a high ceiling play. It was clear this year that Georgia was not going to be beat on a wheel route. Florida tried on multiple occasions to hit one. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I'm going to show you one here. Florida's going to motion Naquan Wright out of the split back set, a set we thought Florida would use. And all they're trying to do is have Naquan run a little rub route here on either one of these defenders. And Georgia is going to make sure this does not happen. First of all, the linebacker on the line, watch his dropping angle. He is dropping back to the wheel window. On top of that, we have the other linebacker also dropping back to the wheel window, but he's a flex player. He can play either the slant route or the wheel on top. He's going to watch the release to see as to see who gets away clear. Right here, he recognizes this is clean. He's good, and you're going to see his helmet turn back towards the inside in a second. Or no, you're not because he disappears. But trust me, he does. Either way, this is what Richardson wants. He wants that wheel route, and that is not happening. That play's dead. You can see that he's not going to throw that. Correct decision by him. Uh, in the meantime, we have Kingsley getting blown up. This is You, you want to play nose tackle here uh, in the NFL? This is how you do it. Look at this drive. It's one, two, three, four, five yards into the line of scrimmage here. Look at this. This is the line of scrimmage. That's a one-on-one -on -one push of Kingsley. That's six yards back into Richardson, who then still evades him. I mean, that's that's unreal. That's unreal. And that's to Kirby's, Kirby's, you know, comments after the game about recruiting and having to have good players. You can line up all you want and put your defensive lineman in whatever technique you want. You know, put him in zero, put him in one, put him in a two eye technique here, rush in the A gap, do whatever you want. But you have to have a player who can do this. And at least here you get a hold at some point with Stuart Reese, right? But I mean, that's, that's just filthy. That's filthy. So this play is dead. This play has gone and dead. Nobody's open. There's nowhere to go with this football. He's about to take a sack. He escapes it. Here you have a player coming downhill because they're playing zone. You're covered here. There's nowhere to go with this football. Wisely throws it away. And that is why Georgia's defense is so good. A nice example there of all 11 players on the same page, making every single window small, every single throw Florida wanted to take. Generally was not there, especially early. That's going to be tough on any quarterback. Florida moving the ball here in the second quarter with 5 minutes and 20 seconds left. Georgia up 3-0. Of course, on this film study, haven't showed you every play, but I've showed you enough to see that Florida has been in plus territory. They've been driving the football. They've had opportunities. But Georgia is tough because they're constantly putting you under pressure on this particular play. There's no simulated pressure. They're simply going to run a stunt or a twist here. Your penetrator is Nolan Smith, your looper, coming around the edge here. Now, as an offensive line, there are two ways to handle this. 
One is that you can pass this off. So essentially the penetrator comes through, you pass this off in your zone scheme here from your tackle to your guard, or you stay with it all the way and make sure you deny that, then your guard has to stay with this looper. Now there are multiple ways to do this. Most of this is going to have to do with how your splits are aligned and where you are in relation to each other. In this case, there's a couple of immediate problems. One, the penetrator is gonna get through here. He's gonna apply some pressure, but most important, the looper is completely free because Georgia gets everything they want. The penetrator's job is to get into this gap while also essentially creating a rub where the guard right there is going to get caught and now your looper is free, and now this play is in trouble. If you want to complete passes against a team that runs as much zone as Georgia does, you have to win. You have to win when you're 5v4 on the offensive line. If you can, you will have an opening. There will be an opening in the zone, and on this play, although you're not going to see it, Florida is going to have one with zipper. It's going to be wide open here. This play would have been open. It's what Richardson is looking for, and he's looking for this on a deep out route. This takes time to develop with your clear out route here. You just have to have time to get it, and Florida's not going to have time. Richardson's going to open up. He's watching this picture right now. All he's looking at here is if the corner continues to run with his wide out just and shorter, and if the safety stays back. If so, he knows he has the out route. He goes to his spot. You can see a little bit of happy feet here. You haven't seen a lot of this out of him, but you can see it. At this point in time in the game, he's been getting pressured a lot. So rather than hitting his right foot and waiting to throw, he knows he wants this to become open before it's open. He's basically, get it open. Come on, get open, get open, get open. I know there's pressure coming at me. You got to get there. And it's not there. He wisely pulls it back down because it would have been too early to release this football. But he is correct in that that is going to be open. That's going to be a first down, a 20-yard gain. He has the exact right read. But Florida's offensive line protection fails them with just a four-man rush. And that's because Georgia is very creative. They are not just going to line up and rush you like a lot of teams will in a predictable this. They're going to simulate pressure. Sometimes they drop back and fill here. Or they come here and they drop back here. Or they drop back there and they fill here. This is a multiple front. And it's one of the reasons why Georgia has been so good this season. They're very, very creative with where they pressure you from. And in this case, it's just a simple twist penetrator and a looper and if you mess this up which happens here despite there being a four-man rush and five blockers you get immediate pressure you cannot block long enough for this play to work and now first and 10 becomes second down and 20 and that's just really unfortunate really unfortunate because that's a play Florida is going to hit and be inside the 15 yard line if they can just block of course Georgia much easier said than done when you have Carter Davis Nolan Smith bunch of talented, talented guys there for Georgia. All right, second and 20, and this play is going to be a special one for me because it is my play. A lot of you know that I coached a professional flag football team. I played quarterback in competitive flag football for a long time. Um, seven on seven flag football really is very much the same as, as seven on seven drills and tackle football. Um, it's not really much different at all. In fact, the main difference is in flag football nowadays, you tend to have multiple quarterbacks rather than just one. And that's what you're going to see here. Of course, Danny Warfel was the quarterback of a pro team that I played on and coached along with myself. And one of the plays we ran is what you're going to see here. They modified it just a little bit. Didn't run it the exact way I'd like to see them run it. Uh, but what's going to happen is Emory Jones is going to throw this ball back here to Anthony Richardson, and you're going to get a post corner. You're going to smash concept and a hitch down here. Now, what's supposed to happen here, the way this play should work, and then you can run this on whatever route you want. They're going to choose to run them on a hitch, but you can call anything you want here. What's supposed to happen here is this post route initially is going to be run slowly. As this ball gets thrown back to the second quarterback, they're then going to snap this to the corner route. Now, this, in my opinion, is not a trick play. There's an entire system you can run off having a multiple quarterback offense. I'm not going to spend... Uh, you know, 20 minutes here describing it, but I could. There's a whole lot of theory behind how this works and what you do. But the primary piece of importance here is this is a system, not a trick play. This is a read. So by having two quarterbacks, Emory Jones on this play is essentially going to put going to put this linebacker in conflict because he's responsible for getting Richardson. The reason this system is pretty nice is it creates a lot of space. You can see how much space Florida has now created. Here, we're stretching them both east, west, and vertically. So a lot of space is being created, 
when this ball gets thrown back, although I would rather it not get thrown back, I'll tell you why in a second. When this ball gets thrown back, look how much space we have created. We have a one-on-one essentially with Richardson and an oncoming linebacker where you could just say, hey, Richardson, beat that guy. Make a move on him and let's see what we get. But you also have an eligible quarterback here who can make a pass. Now, what should be happening here in this situation is ideally you'd like to have Emory Jones throwing this post route. You're going to see this post route here. And if I could show you the quarterback view, uh, this post route has a lot of space to be hit. Secondarily, what you want to have is these are always read routes. So this receiver should know if he's got too high above him, which he has, he's going to have two, he's going to have two safeties basically beyond him here. And you'll see in this view when Richardson catches this ball, that he should just sit in the open zone. Instead, he's going to flow right into the defender. And now he is essentially double teamed on this play on second and 20. And Richardson actually almost gets this ball through there, winds up being an incomplete pass. Here is another look at it. We're going to throw it back. Now watch this here. Here's your space. You want to run this on a post route here. The reason you want to do this is this is your conflict defender. If he runs with this post route, Richardson would immediately flow into this area. Again, Florida's not doing this. I'm telling you what the exact play really is in the playbook, where it came from. And that way, Richardson would read right away. The only two defenders who can stop me are here. If he carries with that post route, I fill the space. Emory Jones throws the ball right here to Richardson. Richardson now is one-on-one with the defender here. That's going to be an easy, easy 10-yard pickup. If instead this linebacker flows down early on to Richardson, Jones is able to this post route early, right? So imagine he comes down early or he's here, hits the post route. Now instead imagine that he carries this and perhaps he comes down to Richardson. You can throw this back. I mean, there's a million things you can do here, but on this particular play, Georgia is sitting nice and deep. We'll play this out nice and deep so you can see what should happen here is Henderson gets here and recognizes that he's got one and then two defenders. There it is, right? George is going to play this well. One and two defenders here. He really ought to just sit right here. He ought to sit right there. There's the path to Richardson. He just snaps it back into the empty space. This should be an option route. His option, his option is to either snap this here in the zone or take this to the corner. That's what should happen. If he has the option here, it's second and 20. This is going to be an easy right? Easy 10 to 12 pickup. Instead, we're just running the play as it is because Florida, again, is running this more of a trick play rather than an actual read-based system. And it winds up going for an incomplete pass. Regardless, pretty cool moment, obviously, that yours truly as a play from his playbook enter into the Florida-Georgia game. It doesn't work, which is unfortunate. Danny Warfel got uh, some pretty sweet credit on the broadcast for bringing that to Dan Mullen, which of course he did from our playbook this summer. And then credit to Dan Mullen for attempting to be creative and pull something way outside of the box and run a play that's, again, commonly seen in the flag football world, not commonly seen in tackle football world. And if you ask me, I'm quite confident you can build an entire system off of things like this because of all of the space it creates. So perhaps one day in the future, you will see more of this stuff in college football, not as a gimmick, but as an actual viable system of stretching the field, both east, west, and north, south. For now... We'll leave that there. Cool moment, though, for the Gator Nation Football Podcast. And, again, for myself, bringing you these film breakdowns. Fourth and 13 for Florida, still 3-0. Obviously, after that second down and 20 play, third down play, Florida going to elect to go for it rather than kick a 50-something yard field goal here. And, essentially, Florida's really going for a one-route play. Shorter's going to run just a pop route and stay here. That's not viable on fourth and 13. Florida's trying to hit... What looks to be a flat route here, you're going to see him turn his head, a little flat route, and then a wheel up the sideline. Is this a bit greedy after we beat Georgia with it so badly last time? Yes, it is, but you're going to see him look back and then take off. Here he comes. This is really the play Florida wants. He's going to read this high to low, but in reality, this is where he wants to go. You'll see him ID it right there. Here he's going to ID it. It's not there. The high play is not there with Copeland. Copeland's doubled. Copeland's up the screen here running a post corner, and that's doubled because Georgia's in a too high like they always are. They're, they were going to keep the top on the defense, and then they're adequately prepared for the fact that he is not going to come downhill too fast here. Why can you do this if you're Georgia? Because you can trust their tackling. They're an excellent tackling football team. He trusts being able to tackle players in space, and that allows Georgia essentially to then keep a spy right here. We're going to make sure he's not going to run for it. We 
we basically profiled this into the week leading up to the Georgia game. Georgia's excellent at stopping running quarterbacks. And now Richardson really only has one option, which is to try to force one in here to Naquan, who was well covered by, of course, the extremely excellent Nicobe Dean. Again, excellent player. Just phenomenal stuff from him. Really hard to beat him. Florida just could not do it at all, despite trying on many occasions. It's what they tried here. And if you can see the All-22 camera, uh, nobody is open on this play. There is absolutely nowhere to go on that 4th and 13. And here's a look at it in case you don't believe me. So here's your play. Here's your flat route. We're going to go for a little flat. Go route at the sideline. Again, Georgia in a too high. Here comes Copeland underneath defender. This is perfect technique, by the way. Underneath defender who stays underneath. There's your post corner. Over top defender who stays to the outside. That's bracketed. That's gone. One-on-one -on -one here. That's gone. Uh, you get a late release here. We're five yards down the field, right? But this is after Richardson's already escaped this. Here's your pop route. There's just nowhere to go with this football, right? There is absolutely nowhere to go with this football. The ball's now out of Richardson's hands. He's just trying to feather one in here to Naquan. This is just not going to get it done again. Here's here's the when the ball should be out right here is what the play is designed for when the ball is coming out. Maybe right here in a perfect world. Where are you going with this football? You play quarterback. Where are you going? You're not going anywhere. Fourth and 13. That's a tall task. All right, second and 10, and now begins the real pain. It's 3 nothing. There's two minutes and 38 seconds left. Perhaps if you're very optimistic, you think, hey, look, Stetson Bennett just threw a pick. Rashad Torrance, of course, faded himself into the end zone where his momentum carried him in. He could have stayed there for a touchback. He's a very smart player. He probably felt like maybe they were going to call that a safety, uh, and he came back out. So now here we are, but no worries. Let's just take care of the football. On first down, Florida barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Now it's second down. Georgia is playing very aggressively. As you've seen before, they typically had six players in the box, and now they have seven. They're essentially daring Florida to try to pass the ball back here. They feel like Florida wants to run, and Florida does want to run on this play. And again, it's going to be the first turnover for Richardson. Is this turnover a bad turnover? Well, you tell me. He's going to encounter Nolan Smith right here at the line of scrimmage. Most quarterbacks are going down right there. He's going to stay up. He's going to beat Nolan Smith. Now Nolan Smith is going to attempt to strip the football. Now everyone else, are they holding him up? It's convenient to say that. I think in this case, all that's really happening here is that Nolan Smith is trying to strip this football. It's 3-0. I'm sure they're frustrated that their offense can't score, and they want to make a play. They're a good defense, right? So you got a lot of people in the scrum here. Florida trying to push him forward, trying to push him forward. Nolan Smith hanging on. And then right at the last second, you've all seen this play a million times. I'm not going to beat it to death here. He makes a heroic play and strips this out of Richardson's hands. So how do I view this play? Is this a bad turnover? That's the first question to ask yourself. Is this a bad turnover? Well, let's look at Richardson's technique. He's driving, still covering the ball. Here's two hands on the ball right here. That's excellent. Two hands on the ball, rotating around to the side, loses his left hand because he's going to the ground. Left hand comes out as he's going to the ground and getting pulled down here. There it goes. And now the ball is stripped from him. That is just an excellent defensive play. Anyone out there that says it's a bad turnover with regards to technique uh, is just, it's just wrong. Factually, that's wrong. That's a great football play. Richardson does everything there you'd want to do from a ball security standpoint. And sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense because sometimes they earn it. And in this case, it's just a really unfortunate time for a turnover. But if I'm coaching Richardson there, you say, hey, look, no big deal. You did everything right. You did everything I taught you. You had good ball security. You were going down to the ground with good ball security. And this guy who's a freak made a great play. And you're a freak too. And let's go make the next play. And unfortunately for Florida, here is Richardson trying to make the next play, so to speak, at second down. So we've already lost four yards uh, on first down, thanks to a false start. Not a good way to start off a drive, then a one-yard gain. And now here we go. So is this turnover bad? A lot of discussion on the interwebs about whether or not this pick was ill-advised or not. Let's look through it and make our own assessments. First of all, Richardson opens up, quickly makes his read identifies. I want you to watch his helmet. This is really important. He opens up and he's looking to the right. That's good. Check because he wants to come to the left. So proper, proper move of the helmet there. Secondarily, 
Here is a defensive lineman, Trevon Walker, number 44. This is a 275-pound guy who's going to step off the line and play a dropping zone defender, opening up this way, which tells you what? It tells you he is trying to make sure that he defends from anybody coming across his face here on a slant route or in breaking route. He is not immediately dropping back into this window. He is denying any initial route there. So Richardson is going to ID this. He sees this, which now makes him feel good about this hitch route that he has coming here. That is the window he wants to throw to. And now you will watch his head go right to it. That is perfect. That is perfect. 100% technique from a quarterback. If I'm on the sideline or I'm watching film with him, I'm saying, great job. You passed the test. That's excellent. And now as we're ready to throw, we get an A-gap pressure. Where did this A-gap pressure come from? It came right here. From a guy we've seen on film a whole bunch, that is N'Kobe Dean, who's an absolute terror, coming with an A that blitz. Again, just four guys coming. Just four guys coming here, right? But they're doing it late, and he's going to get home. He shouldn't get home. He should not get home here. Florida's in a zone scheme. We've got to pick this up. We've got to pick this up. We're right here. We do not pick it up. Stuart Reese has not picked this up. Kingsley does not pick this up. Now we're flying through, and now Richardson is not going to be able. Look at his feet. He cannot drive all the way down on this throw. He's got the right read. He cannot drive down on this throw. Here's your dropper who now sees his eyes, sees where he wants to go. He's going to start dropping into that window, but that was not his initial drop lane. And now we're going to see what talent does. This is a defensive lineman who all in that span of time very, very quickly is able to get himself. Here's the football. I want to show you the football here. There's the football, is able to get himself into position to just tip this ball. Now, look, he is open. We're going to see the end zone angle here in a second. He's open. This is going to be a completion on second down and 14, and it's going to be a first down. Everything about this play so far is good. It's the right read. It's the right place. We're going to look at what goes wrong here from the other angle. And instead, this ball gets tipped and then intercepted. Now, if you just look at it from that angle, you think, oh, was, was he going to get there? Was Nolan Smith going to get there anyway? Is he here to get to this? The answer is no, he's not. This is going to wind up being a completion. Let's look now from the end zone angle here. This is a much better angle. And let's look at everything I just showed you. His head's going to open up here. Watch watch the helmet. Look to the right. Look at the, look at the footwork here. He's denying any in-breaking route first. He's not immediately dropping back into the window. Richardson wants to go to. And here is Henderson. Opens up. Now he moves his helmet. This is the space that we have. Here's our window. And at this point in time, here comes our A-gap pressure. Again, Reese is not blocking anyone. He needs to ID this more quickly. He needs to get to this. You've got to take that away, Reese. You take that away. We have a completion of a different ball game. Instead, he's too slow to get there. Now we have N'Kobe Dean coming down. Here's your window. we got plenty of grass in here. Here's your window. A perfect ball. A perfect ball is going to be thrown not here, but here. Right, we want to settle into this hitch route and have him basically catch this ball on this shoulder because we don't want to throw him into the dropper. Richardson, I have to believe, is going to be doing just that. That's where I know he wants to go. And I can tell you he wants to go that because he tends to always follow through with his right foot. And if he was able to do that, this ball is not going to go where it goes. He's going to actually finish here and it's going to go right there, which would have been the perfect throw. Instead, he cannot finish this throw. There's the line. You can see the football right there. It goes on that line that I've drawn. Now you're going to have a phenomenal play. Again, a phenomenal play being made here. Look at this play. This is a fully outstretched, barely going to touch this ball. This is open. That's the definition of open for a receiver. He's open, right? This ball has to get past the dropper, and he is going to just barely get his hands on this. And instead of this being a nice completion where we're turning up field and gaining more yards, it goes for an interception. That is exceptionally cruel. What's more cruel is the fact that there's people out there that think this was some sort of, quote, bad read. That, to me, is a poor understanding of what is going on here. This is not a bad read. This is an excellent read. One more time. Open up to the right. This is their footwork. It's your posture. You're defending this route. You have this window. You're opening the window. If we don't have this A-gap pressure, I think this ball is going to be thrown correctly. Just like I showed you, it's going to be a completion and a first down and something I show in a film review as a high ceiling play from Richardson. It doesn't. Now, is there something Richardson could have done to have made this play even better? 
And the answer is yes, there is. He IDs this dropper right here, and he comes a little bit early to his actual throw. Now, why do I say this? Because when he comes to this, there's his right foot hitting the ground. He's not going to throw it yet. See this extra little hitch that he has here? Take a look. Right foot, extra little hitch, little hitch, little hitch. And he's not quite ready to throw because he's jumped the timing just a little bit. And again, this is why Georgia's defense is so good. That is maybe a, a three-tenths of a second of timing too early, but that is going to make all the difference in this play. This is going to be an NFL-style window throw, and if he keeps his head here for just three-tenths of a second longer to keep to keep Trevon right there, if he just holds him a little longer and then snaps his head to his throw right here, hold him a little longer, a little longer, keep holding, no, keep holding, keep holding, now snap your head. If he had done that, if he had done that, then you don't get this turn that you get there. And if you don't get that turn, you keep his feet like this. This is going to be an easier completion. So yes, he could have done something better. If I'm evaluating this with him in the film, and that's what I'm saying. Hey, look, that was great. Everything you did there was great. You know, you're facing a zone team. Hold that gaze just a little bit longer when you get the look you want to make that window even bigger for you. But outside of that, I'm not faulting him here. I know exactly where he wants to go. I know this throw is going to wind up going inside shoulder here inside being this side of the field, away from the dropper for a completion and a first down. I know that's where he wants to go. I say that's a good look by you. It's a good read. It's the right player to throw the football to. We got to get you better protection up front. Way to keep your eyes downfield and not on the oncoming linebacker. I like everything you did here, A-Rich. Unfortunately for you, a ball that's thrown off by just one yard winds up going for the cruelest of all fates with a pick. Super, super unfortunate. In my opinion, not a bad turnover, not a bad read. I will live with that for my quarterbacks all day long. Unlucky fumble, really unlucky interception. Those are two turnovers I am not at all frustrated with as a coach. All right, with the game now flipped on its head, Georgia up 17 nothing. Florida needs to drive. They need to score. They need to be aggressive. Third down and one. Here's something, of course, A. Rich does really well. Georgia's going to break through with their nose tackle here right at the point of attack. Immediate pressure. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Who is going to be able to win this battle? Anthony Richardson or, you know, one of the many excellent defensive linemen in this case, Devontae Watt, 315-pounder coming through the line, right? Blowing up right there through the A-gap. Again, not what you want on this play. Going to meet him three yards back. And Anthony Richardson is going to win this battle, break through that tackle, and convert a first down. Obviously, a big benefit of having a guy like Richardson is not only do I think he has a high, a high ceiling as a passer, a very high ceiling as a passer. He's physically gifted as a runner, and he earns a first down there for Florida, keeping the drive alive. First and 10 here for Florida. Now trying to drive again. 28 seconds left. They need to at least get into field goal range. We have trips. Here on the boundary side, Georgia is going to bail their corner, which they had been doing oftentimes to be safe. They're going to make sure they bail their corner. They're basically going to play a three-level defense on the side. They're going to play here to the inside. They're going to give Florida a little five-yard hitch out here, and they're going to have their middle or their slot, their nickel here. He's going to drop back and soak up any corner route. So you've got top protection here. You've got middle protection. You've got shallow protection, and you have a safety over top that you can't see. Over top here, we're playing man-to-man -man across the field. Man-to-man -man across the field with a safety off the screen helping as well. And then man-to-man -man here on the interior. So Georgia basically going to make sure that nothing gets over the top of them. Richardson is looking to throw, looking to throw this corner route. It's going to fade over here, which is absolutely not there. No chance of throwing this. A nice pocket climb here. Hits his spot. Climbs the pocket. Wants to throw this. Keeps climbing. Very, very nice. Not there. On top of that, we have Tarquin right here getting beat to the inside. Something Georgia does so well. You see a lot of pass rushers, especially in college football, just commit to always going to the outside at this stage. You can see how well Georgia teaches this. They teach to go inside, push up and go inside where a good quarterback is going to be moving up into the pocket. You see it right there. That's excellent technique. Great coaching. Richardson wisely does not attempt to throw this football. Hangs on to it and takes what would have been a sack into almost a no gain loss there. Again, because he is so strong, you'll take that. But the key to that was nowhere to go on this play, nowhere to go downfield on this play. Again, you be the quarterback here. You watch what you see. 
There's your look. Here's what you want. Right off your screen, you're not going to see it, but you got a top defender and you have another defender off here by this play button that is waiting for this route. He's waiting for it. It is not there. That's what he's looking at right now. It is absolutely not there. No chance you're going to hit this route. Again, you can't see if there's a muddled, there's a muddled body here waiting for this pass. There's just nowhere to go with the football over there. The only real route you'd have is this one, but that's going to be pretty tough to see right here because of this pressure. Again, imagine that you get a nice block here. If this is sealed up, he's going to climb the pocket. He's going to not like this. And as we've seen Richardson do earlier in the game, he'd snap his head around right there and he complete this pass. But there's no chance to do anything else with that interior pressure. That ball's going to get knocked out and he's going to have to take what he gets there, which is a loss of one yard. Setting up the play that nobody wants to break down, but I will break down right now. And here is, without a doubt, the worst interception of Richardson's career. I will play it here and then we'll walk through what should have happened. There's your pick six. There it is. Pick six, N'Kobe Dean, an absolute terror, jumping the hitch route from Malik Davis, something we saw earlier in the game. So what could or should have Richardson done differently? First of all, there's just 17 seconds left. Just 17 seconds left. It's second and 11. Gaining five yards here is not going to matter. So throwing a strong side hitch route to the far side of the field is a curious choice anyway. It's even more curious given how Nicobe Dean has consistently played very aggressively on any hitch route. On any hitch route. But what just happened in the previous play was Florida had trips and they bailed their corner. Now that was a corner, not Nicobe Dean. So perhaps Richardson in this case is thinking, I'm probably going to get something similar. This could be my buzz defender. I'm going to open up. I'm going to read my buzz defender. And if he's not there, I'm going to throw this hitch route. We have seen Richardson time and time again actually read this route. I'm going to move right to the all 22. And we've seen him not throw balls like this one because typically he's not premeditating where he is going. I have to believe he premeditated this one. Dean has been, again, playing aggressively on the hitch. There's also 17 seconds left. You're getting a way, way too high look from Georgia telling you they're going to allow you to get somewhere in this area, but they're definitely not going to let you get way over the top. So if this is where you want to throw the football, go for it. We're going to see if we can't get to you with another simulated pressure. Richardson is going to take the snap, immediately go to where he wants to go here on the hitch. You can see him open up and read the buzz defender. He sees this defender's not buzzing. He's playing man. I like my hitch route. However, he needs to then also take his time just for a second here and read Nicobe Dean. Now, Nicobe Dean, this is unbelievably good off-man technique, by the way. I've talked a lot about this on my channel. This is a linebacker. This is perfect. He's going to just take two very small steps backwards, but he's going to leave himself able to explode on a hitch route. And again, this is excellent technique. He's not going to open. If you saw his hips open and bail and you're Richardson, that's when you know I can throw the hitch route. If you do not see his hips, if you do not see his hips open, if they do not open, then that means he's able to come down. And these hips are not open. Those are square and they're coming. This throw is from the far hash. It's a long throw for a hitch route here. And I get it. If you're Richardson, you throw the ball on time. You're thinking it's a linebacker. I got Malik here. I'm premeditating this ball. I'm going to just sling this hitch route to him. I like my matchup. No chance he's getting there. However, you are underestimating the incredible play of Nicobe Dean. And he is going to shoot himself out of a cannon here. Right downhill. Right into the lane. Picking this pass off. I mean... That's perfect. That's a play that Deion Sanders would be extremely proud of. And then he finishes it. I mean, that is such high-level stuff. But it's also low-level quarterbacking from Richardson. Nothing about what happens here in the post-snap tells you that throwing this hitch is a good idea. It's the wrong risk-reward. There's not a lot of time left in the half. There's no benefit to you completing this pass. At best, with a squared-up defender here, Malik Davis gets tackled for a five- or six-yard gain. That is not worth the risk you take on a squared up hips defender throwing a hitch route to the far side. It's just not worth it. It's something he has not done before. It's understandable as a freshman mistake in this moment, given the way the game had gone, but this is a no-go pass. This is the type of pass that if you continue to see Richardson make, you'd have to reevaluate where he was going to go with his ceiling ability 
because good quarterbacks tend to make throws like this. They log it into their mind and they rarely do it again. I can't say never because even the best quarterbacks are going to wind up throwing pick sixes on bad reads, bad situations, bad guesses. But this type of play with this type of situation with 17 seconds left with no reward here, this is a play that should not happen in this situation again ever for Anthony Richardson if he is the kind of ceiling quarterback I think he could be or if he's the kind of quarterback he wants to become. Perhaps you make this kind of interception in the middle of the second quarter with a lot of time left on a regular down and distance and you just kind of get confused because they give you a different look you hadn't seen before and you're under duress. But here he's under no duress. He's under no pressure. There's no reward for this throw. The defender does not give him posture to make it. He pulls the trigger anyway and pays the ultimate price. The ultimate price. So again, as we chronicle Anthony Richardson's rise, we're going to find out how good he can become. And obviously, this is, this is the throw he wants to have back. But again, uh, you're going to see quarterbacks. All quarterbacks are going to make these kind of mistakes from time to time. You're never going to excuse them. This is a very, very bad mistake. So we have three turnovers from Richardson in under three minutes. Two of them, no big deal. Very unlucky Keep on doing what you're doing. This one, however, this is one you got to put away and say, don't do that again. That cannot be done again. That was a breakdown of technical quarterbacking skill, and you paid a heavy price. We'll pick up the action in the third quarter after a rough, obviously, end to the first half for Anthony Richardson and a rough set of stats in this game up to this point. Of course, we've already covered the first half, so you've seen Florida was moving the ball. Uh, they did have opportunities, and they just were unable to cash in. Let's see what the second half holds for Richardson. Of course, we know he's going to go out with a concussion. Florida going to use a pre-snap motion here, attempting to run the ball through the C-gap here on the strong side. Georgia is going to spill this right into this gap. Spill here. He's going to replace him and be the edge defender. Richardson, I have to believe here, is just supposed to hand this off because if this is a zone read and he incorrectly reads this defensive end, he would have kept it for sure. If he correctly reads this defensive end, who he's really not looking at, he would have also kept it because he has come in way too flat and way too hot. And had he kept it, Florida may have had something here. But I believe this was a handoff all the way, judging by what Richardson did here. That's a handoff all the way. And Georgia is all over it, all over it. This play is dead. It's the gap they want to run through. That gap is no longer there. The unblocked man, Quay Walker, here now is in a foot race with Pierce. Pierce is going to decide, I don't like that. I'm not going anywhere. Let's try to bounce this to the outside. He does this. We get a terrible angle from the, the free safety, or strong safety, rather, here, coming downhill, out of control, filling a wrong gap. And that allows Pierce then to turn the corner. Pierce had an excellent, excellent game. Uh, obviously, really was the shining star for Florida on offense, as he's done so often against good competition. A really, really good downhill runner, explosive, hard to tackle, good vision, excellent run from him, setting up Florida in the red zone. Florida tried on multiple occasions to run a speed option from a variety of sets and a variety of looks, and really none of them worked. The reason is Georgia has excellent linebacker play and excellent defensive line play. Something Alabama lacked against Florida early on. Obviously, every team has watched Florida do this, and they've not wanted to allow it to continue. But here is the key to stopping, obviously, a speed option. We're going to go uh, with an unbalanced look. So Florida's going to try to make this a little bit tricky. Which way can they run this? They can run it either way. Georgia's going to counter again with just six, right? Just six. Florida has eight. Georgia has six. Here's a conflict defender to give them seven. And, of course, anyone in the slot is going to be looking in as well. But in reality, this is six versus eight in the box. Florida likes this matchup, and perhaps they feel like they can run this, although it's really to the to the strong side because you have the running back here. Uh, it's to Georgia's, you know, numbers-wise, you feel pretty good about this, right? If I can win this race here to the edge, I can engage this linebacker. I have my pitch here. I'm going to win. I've got a block and a block, and I'm in good shape. But Georgia, this is why they're so good on defense. So right away, you're going to see edge control. Let's go ahead and take the tackle and let's push him to the inside and give myself edge control. And that's huge. That's step one to why this play works for Georgia is now he is able to effectively take Richardson. Now you're going to watch N'Kobe Dean, the all-world defender here at linebacker. He is going to immediately do his job, which is to take the running back. He can do this confidently because he can trust that there's edge control there. So now you're going to come to where this play is eventually going. It's going here. He knows this. And now Richardson sees this, and this is not a winning look. There's nothing you can do here 
this is not good. Richardson now has one choice of one choice, only to keep it and see what can happen. He elects to try to cut back through the gap, which is the right decision. He avoids, obviously, right? He avoids right here the tackle that would have been made. And instead, perhaps also a little block in the back. Eh, not called. Take that. Uh, and winds up actually gaining a few yards on this play. But regardless, this is textbook of how you stop a team running to run speed option. You don't fly up the field here. You don't get stuck to the inside. Uh, Georgia had a good feeling for a lot of the plays Florida was going to run in this game. They had a very, very good bead. Georgia here is expecting run. They're not pushing up the field. They're all holding. They're expecting run. They get run. They get edge control. They get excellent pressure here from the linebacker. And there's just nothing Florida can do on this play. So again, that's why Georgia is so sound against the run. Florida tried speed option multiple times, just couldn't get it to work. Second and seven, Florida now threatening Georgia down 24 0. There's still plenty of time in this game for Florida to apply pressure. Richardson having a nice drive. Florida running the ball a lot on this drive. They're going to run it again here with Richardson, and you're going to see another excellent defensive play by Georgia. This time, Georgia comes in. They're going to fill the box up. Fill the box up here with seven and an eighth. He's looking in. He's playing eight. So now in this case, they're going to they're going to fully go basically eight on what they think is going to be eight on eight or potentially nine on eight. But they're they're loading the box here on second and seven. They're expecting run. And here is why Georgia, again, is such a good defense. Assignment football. So we're going to bring pressure here. And then rather than also being pressure here and expose ourselves. We're going to drop back. But as we drop back, as Adam Anderson drops back, look at his helmet. He's looking into the backfield. Florida's going to fake this handoff. Let's get rid of him. We know he's out of the play, which is true. And now because of his eye control, eyes are in the backfield. He is not fooled. If he does what a lot of defenders do in this case, I'm supposed to drop back into my zone. He just drops back, which is what Florida wants him to do to run with this route here. He just drop backs, bails himself out. Instead, he goes away. Now, this creates a problem. Here's your pulling guard and Braun. Braun is looking to kick him out to give Richardson the gap that he wants, either here or here. He can't kick anyone out because no one's there. Why? Because he sank back two yards off the line of scrimmage. So instead, Braun engages the most likely defender to make a tackle, which is correct. Richardson now comes outside, and you can imagine if he's running here, Florida has something. The only player that has a chance to stop him is N'Kobe Dean, and he's just too far away. He's not going to get there from that side of the formation. But because we're playing smart assignment football, we're doing exactly as we're taught. We're going to drop off the line while reading the backfield because we know we have help over top. We don't have to turn our head here. We're a conflict defender who's taking away any kind of quick little route in the flat and is also able to do this. And that is defense by alignment. And that's really simply most of what makes up a good defense is consistently staying in a good alignment despite pre-snap motions, despite what happens post-snap. It's not as easy as Georgia makes it look. I promise you in the college football game, it's not as easy as Georgia makes it look to consistently get their assignments right, but they do it. They're excellent players. They're extremely well coached and you can see it all over this film. And unfortunately for Richardson, obviously, this is the play he does get concussed on. Gets hit there to the side of his helmet. You saw the replays on TV right there. Just takes a huge sandwich hit here with N'Kobe Dean finishing the play again. You want to show up on a film? You want to play in the NFL? Do stuff like 17 does. Show up on film in all phases of the game. And unfortunately for Florida, that ends Richardson's day. I liked that Dan Mullen kept him out there. Thought that was important. Although, of course, too little too late with the handling of Richardson this year for Florida. But it was good he committed to him. It was good he said he was going to stay there for the rest of the game. And unfortunately, we're not going to see him anymore on this film review. All right, first and 10 for Florida. Here's a look at the all-22. Emory Jones now has to come in, pressed into service. Played pretty well. I think he did what we expected him to do in general with a few upside throws we'll talk about, a few bonehead throws we'll talk about. We're not going to spend too much time on Emory. He's already been well chronicled. Nothing really new to show you from him. Nothing that changes my mind based upon the film on him. But this is a nice play for Florida that should have hit, but the timing is going to wind up being off. So we're going to toss this ball to Malik Davis. We're going to get a block and a release, right, where you see the circle there from Gary Danielson. And this is a touchdown. He's wide open right here. He's going to go off your screen. He's right there. He's wide open. This is not the all-22 camera, by the way. My mistake, because if it was, of course, you would see him the entire time. You don't see him, which is how you know it's not the all-22 camera. It's the one CBS chose that cuts off our view. But regardless, Malik waits just too long. The timing of this play is just not right. He's faking this run 
but he doesn't really need to. He pretty much could have taken this ball here and just taken two steps and looked to throw. This defender is already committed. Him kind of running out this fake for an extra four yards, all it does is give him a chance to recover. And recover he does. And by the time Malik throws this ball, it's just way late. He's still open, but he was a good six yards open for an easy touchdown. Malik throws this ball out of bounds. I like the play call from Florida. Uh, something I think they could have hit on there. Again, against a team like Georgia, the windows always stay small. And that's why I show you this play. Is they win. Florida wins right here. They win. Against a lot of teams, he's just out of the play. Right? He's way down here. But he's not. He recovers. He at least forces Malik to have to make a throw on time. It's not on time. And that ends a good play call with the execution of the play not being good enough to beat Georgia. Right, third and five for Florida. This is a big moment in the game. Florida could score here and apply at least some game pressure to Georgia, who in the in the second half, although they drove the ball consistently, they were turning the ball over and they were giving Florida chances. This is a this is just a problem with Emory, a guy who's been in again, he's been in the system for too long. Of course, we talked about Richardson's turnovers and why you may expect that for a red shirt freshman and why I don't mind two of the three of them. This one is inexcusable for a guy of Emory's age, even if he has not played in a ton of games as a solo starter. You just can't do this. He's going to premeditate this route. He is throwing this route no matter what, and you just can't do that. We saw what happened to Richardson when he did that. Emory just opens up, and he's just looking at it. He's looking at it. He does not care what's happening here. He's not even looking here. He never even checked there. He has no idea where that guy is. He's like, I am just going to throw this. He's telegraphing this so much so that obviously you're going to get a play on the ball right here where that's almost a pick. And this is probably going to be a pick. One more time. Look at the spacing here. That, if it's not a pick, is going to be a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Right? What really ought to happen here on third and five, quickly, is it's not hard to read both of these routes. So here you're going to have a little, little out route, a little whip out flare. It's a great route on the goal line. He's going to win. Take a look at the leverage. If Emery just simply is opening up and looking at the defender here, He's going to see right away he's on top of that route. That's not there. And he's going to come right to here. And he's got a shot. He's got a shot with this route right here. Probably not going to score, but he's got a shot. If he breaks a tackle, he could score or get the first down. Doesn't happen. Premeditates this one. Is fortunate for that not to be a pick. Not to be a pick here by the corner coming into the lane. That's Ringo. And obviously also not a pick there. George did a very, very nice job defending Florida's running back wheel in this game. They were not going to let it beat them two years in a row. With a score 27 0, Georgia elected to start playing very, very soft against Florida. They started to basically auto bail all of their corners on most of these plays. Emory significantly benefited from this. Of course, if you watch this film review for any amount of time, you know that his favorite route is what? It's the hitch route. And they're going to run a nice concept here that they like with Emory. Little out route, little hitch route from Shorter, who runs a really nice hitch route. Emery's going to do what he typically does. Same exact stuff we've seen. He's going to look here just for a second. He's really not going there, not even looking there. He wants the hitch. Oh, yeah, hitch looks good. Ball's going to come out. Again, a, a ball that's too low. Shorter can't catch this and try to make a move anywhere. He's just going to have to basically shortstop it, which he does, and he gets the first down. But Georgia was content this situation this time to give Florida those throws, burn the clock out, and kind of just get out of there. And Emory, of course, benefited from that, but he did complete them. So, of course, you have to take what the defense gives you, and he did that in the second half. Third and eight for Emory, and this is, in my opinion, the best throw that I will now have on film of Emory's career. This is a really, really good throw. It is still going to be a prime example of Emory Jones and what he does well and what he does not do well. Also, just a difficult scenario with Georgia's defense. Again, who's coming, who's going? You know they run a ton of simulated pressures. Hard to know. You know they're in zone. You don't know where these guys are dropping. Here comes Ringo. He's going to come down from his corner spot here, and they're going to send a simulated pressure there. Emery's going to open up like he typically does and just sort of look here, but doesn't want to go there. He should want to go there because this is Nicobe Dean versus Copeland, a dream matchup. That's exactly what you want to hit. You look for that all day, every day. I don't care how good Dean is. He's not going to cover a number one wide receiver. And then you're going to see at the top of the screen, and you'll see later that Copeland really just puts a cold move on him there and gets wide open. But Emery, he's already come off of that because he knows where he wants to go, which is over here. Now, here's what he does really well. We've talked a lot about Emery generally throwing off his back foot, leaning backwards, not driving down. He's going to keep his eyes downfield. He's going to feel the pressure. He's going to step up. Nice little slide step there. And he's going to have to finish forward because he took a slide step forward. He has to drive this throw forward. And I don't think it's a coincidence that it's his best throw that I have on film 
ball placement, velocity out in front of the receiver, and timing. It's a great ball. Zipper almost drops it, which would have been a shame. And he picks up an additional five yards because of the ball placement. Let's look from Emory Jones' view. Again, you're the quarterback. You have no idea who's coming here. They're capable of dropping anyone in this front six out. You can't look at them. you got to just read the field. Open up. Here comes your look at this point in time. Right away, right now, if you're in the NFL, if you're Tom Brady, you pick your favorite NFL quarterback, you see this matchup and you see this leverage and you know Copeland's on a slant. You know he's going to win. You know he's going to win. You're simply going to wait for him to win and you're going to take that pass every single day of the week. Again, he's not really looking there. There's no real look there. He just wants to come back to his actual throw here. However, this is not a throw he's typically comfortable making. We know he loves throwing hitches. He's going to climb this pocket, which is what he does nicely. He's going to drive forward, and this ball's got to be thrown. It's already being thrown now. Defenders turned. Good anticipation. Good timing. Great ball placement out in front, leading his receiver into the grass and allowing him to maximize the play. That's great work by Emery. Again, I think his best throw I have so far on film. And we will, of course, on this channel, always give credit where credit is due. So nice ball there, Emery. Nice climb of the pocket. Uh, even if, again, we missed really our first read, way to hit that one. It's a really nice ball. So we're going to follow up that conversion a few plays later with the side of Emery, of course, that uh, is not the side you want to see. Just these are not mistakes a guy, again, with his experience level can make. It's fourth and seven, so you got to put the ball up. So you're not going to fault it here. First down would be a lot worse. But right away, he's going to look right. You know he's not going right. He's not really wanting to go right. And then he's going to look to his intended target, which Florida was trying all day long. They really wanted to take advantage of the running back versus linebacker matchup. And Georgia's linebackers were up to the task primarily because Florida kept attacking Dean. And I'm pretty sure Dean just put on film. He put the entire NCAA on notice. If you want to put a running back on him one-on-one, -on -one, you're probably not going to win that battle very often, especially not underneath. He's proven he's an excellent defender. Florida thought they had something there. They just didn't. That's where they wanted to go. He takes that away. That's not there. Now Emery's in trouble, and you know he's got to throw his favorite route. He's not going to climb into here where he should. He's going to stand back there. He's going to you know, jump throw this one. Hope it gets to, of course, Shorter, who's coming back for a hitch, who is open, by the way. Look, he's open. There he is. And that should have been a pick, right? That should have been Dean with another pick in this game. I mean, this how good is this guy? You've watched this channel. How often have you seen an individual player highlighted on so many plays? That's how good that guy is. And that goes to Kirby's comments about, hey, look, afterwards, the scheme matters. That stuff matters, right? But at the end of the day, you got to have good players. And this is a fantastic play. There's Gary Danielson highlighting this for you. I'm going to show you the same thing. He opens up. He's not really making a read there. Again, there's no real read there. That's a problem with Emory. It's not really any kind of read there. He's just wanting to throw this route he wants to throw the whole time, which is this one. And that is not there. That's just not there. Now, at this point in time, he thinks, okay, I've got this hitch route because I know I got the hitch route. The hitch route's there. But since Dean is running, he's running this dig route essentially for, there it is, for Naquan, right? He's going to run it for him. This ball happens to come right to him, which could have been a pick. Again, it's fourth down. He got it to the football there. You can't just take a sack. That'd be much worse. Uh, but obviously, Emery just doesn't see it, opens up, kind of floats one, thinks maybe I'll stick one in there. Doesn't work out. And a lot of this just has to do with the mechanics of Emery Jones. Get the right foot on the ground. Once it's here, drive yourself into the space. Drive yourself into the space. Reset. And instead, he's going to fade away, fade sideways, kind of just throw backwards, jump. I mean, those mechanics, you just can't have that. That's going to lead to throws like that. And interceptions like that on fourth down or any down, you got to clean that stuff up. Second and eight, just want to show a nice, nice slant route here from Emery. Again, technique's not going to be right at all. <laughs> just look at him. Just watch. This is not what you want to see your technique here. You're going to pump fake this early. There's your pump fake. Pump fake this to get that defender out of your window for this, which all that's good. But you want to reset that and be able to drive down the throw. He's not. He's going to jump backwards. He's jumping backwards to throw this football. But look, Emery, Emery gets, he gets, he gets away with this sometimes. Not what you want to see, but he does it. And this is a good ball. That's a really nice ball. That's great placement. Great placement high and away. Shorter is able to keep his momentum going down the field and gain the extra yards. That's great. That's good stuff. Again, so if you're looking in the film room and you're coaching Emery, you're saying, hey, I like the result of that play. I love the ball placement of that play. 
but we have to clean up what's going on with your footwork because that is not repeatable. It's going to lead to errant throws, going to lead to throws off the mark. You have to clean that up if you want to make those throws consistently. Second down and four. The game is obviously well over. It's still 27-0, but Florida wants to score, and Georgia is content to let them score. You can tell by how a team is playing defense. They, they want to keep a shutout, but also watch the corners here. We're way off. We're bailing on everything. Just going to keep everything in front, really, right? We're not. We're just going to keep everything in front. And the fun kind of begins here with Ringo up top, Georgia's best corner, and Kirby Smart. So he's just going to bail into a cover three, and he is expecting to have a buzz to flat defender, whereas other safety is going to fill and pick up here. So he's going to hold for a second, take away any kind of initial seam route, and then buzz here. That's what he's expecting. He's not going to get that. He's just going to stay with this route the whole way. And now it's an easy Emory Jones favorite throw. Let's throw a hitch. I love that one. Great. On time. Good ball. They're shorter. We all love that. And then here is Kirby Smart. What the heck is going on? What's happening here? Where are you? That's too easy. And here comes Ringo. Ringo makes a tackle. And immediately you see Ringo push off. And he takes his mouthpiece out because he's ready. He's ready to have a conversation. He's ready, he's, and he's going to say something. You're, you're going to lose it. We don't see it, unfortunately, on this clip. We'll see it in a second. But he's saying something. He's not happy about it. He feels like that needs to be, obviously, you know, a buzz out there to that spot. Now, I only show you this to say I like this from Georgia. Obviously, I'm not a Georgia fan. You know, I went to University of Florida. I'm clearly not a Georgia fan. But this is what you want to see out of a team trying to win a title. Now, Georgia's got issues on offense with how they handle their talent, how they don't play the right quarterback. But this is what you want to see on defense, right? I don't care. It's 27 nothing. You want to make sure you get your stuff right. And I don't mind that Ringo, although you don't want to see him undress that coach, Ringo's a smart player. He feels like, listen, I'm in cover three. That guy's got a buzz. Kirby Smart's not happy at him, right? He's upset. But I like the fact that they are trying to play at a high level despite what this score is. They want every play to be executed well. And that's what high-level teams do. Let's take a look at the next play and see what happens. All right, first and 14, same drive, same situation, and same formation. Florida's going to just roll out here four wide and take a hitch route. Here's Ringo again. Here's the defender that's not going to buzz. He's just going to stay with them on the same exact runoff vertical. And, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, this is great. Look who's sitting right here. He's right there. I mean, that's too good. He's going to make the tackle for him, right? We got what's going on here. This is frustrating. Here's Ringo. There's Ringo. He's going to make that tackle. Here he comes. Puts him out of bounds. It's Weston with the catch. And here we go. Conversation is going to ensue. Kirby's like, look, dude, I would have picked that off. I'm on the sideline. What the heck is going on? There's Ringo talking to him. And now Ringo's like, I'm good, coach. I'm not going to say anything. I know that my I know that my um, corners coach just got into me and said, look, you don't talk to coach like that. I don't care even if you're right. You can't talk to coach like that. Just walk past him. He's like, all right, cool. I'm going to walk past him. I'm good. I'm going to get to the sideline. I'm going to get out of here. Don't, no, no, no. Kirby's like, listen, 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 Ringo. You turn around. Turn around. Look, look at me. What are you doing? If he catches one more hitch route, I'm not going to play you for at least the next half of the next game. And Ringo's like, man, I'm telling you, this is crazy. Because look at the all 22. He's like, this is crazy. Because watch me, coach. I want you to watch me on film on Monday. Look at me. Here's my hand. My hand is saying, you pick this up. Because we're in cover three. We're in cover three going to split the field like this and I'm taking the vertical route so you go here doesn't happen he takes this and Ringo's saying listen if we're in cover three I have to be back here that is totally correct I can't be coming down here because then we'll get beat on corner routes so there's the pointing there it is and hence Ringo thinking I'm hot I'm frustrated I don't like this right I don't like this I don't agree but again I know my position coach told me don't talk to coach and now all of a sudden I'm going back on the field and no, I'm not. I'm not going back on the field. You're off the field, son. What is going on here? Conversation ensues. <laughs> Obviously entertaining stuff. I can't tell you how Georgia wants to play their cover three there, but it would be pretty unusual if they actually are in a cover three to have Ringo coming down on that. But clearly Kirby in this particular situation is what they're going for, which means, which means diagnosing this. They're almost certainly choosing instead to pattern match here or, or, Kirby's just in, incorrect and frustrated. But most likely what he's wanting Ringo to do is just pattern match this hitch. He's going to let this pattern match here and run over top. And he's going to elect to play however he wants in the middle. That's unusual in this situation of the game. It's far more likely they're playing cover three. So if you're a Georgia fan, you have inside information. They talk about this play on something else. Let me know exactly what they wanted to do. But 
again, I find this stuff humorous uh, because, again, Ringo's pretty convicted here. This is what needs to be happening. It's not happening. Entertaining stuff. There's one more play I'll show you. All right, Ringo's back in the game after he served his penalty. He's back in there now. He's not having to worry about cover three because Florida's got first and goal. On the two-yard line, the streak is in jeopardy with 253. Florida needs to score. Here comes the classic QB run. Emory Jones going to just power his way in there. Georgia still playing a lot of their starters. Not all of them, but at least half of them at this point. Florida gets the touchdown. An important one. You don't want to be the coach who loses to basically everyone streak-wise in Dan Mullen and then also loses the scoring streak. So at least he keeps this one intact. Emory Jones slides himself into the end zone. And, you know, again, good for Emory. He's been a consummate team guy. He never complains, never says anything bad in the media or about his teammates. You got to love that about that guy. You have to respect that. And he comes in and he handles himself adequately in this game. In my opinion, Emory is a nice backup at the college football level, especially on a very good team, which Florida is not right now, because you could win with him by giving him a conservative game plan. He's just not going to be the number one horse if you're trying to win a championship. Of course, Florida is far away from that right now. As always, if you like the content, let me know about it. Let me know what you want to see next time. Are these videos too long? Should I make them shorter? The season's kind of winding down now. Florida not with a lot of uh, opponents left that are too intriguing. Should I just, you know, profile a couple of plays here and there? Whatever the case may be, let me know. I'm trying to tailor this stuff to you guys. Uh, I'm James from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, and I will see you next week. Next week.